What's good? What's happening? We got Moon. My first reaction to Moon. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Moon. Moon Real, I think, is his little app. You know what I'm saying? Who is the most degenerate influencer? Look at this thumbnail, bro. Ruby Rose, I don't know how or why she's here. I ain't gonna lie. I mean, granted, I'm not like on top of anybody that's, you know what I'm saying, famous or well known in the industry and shit like that. Whatever I know is because I watched somebody else's video, like Jamari, Sonny V2, Patrick. Now we got Moon here to explain a couple things, you know what I'm saying? Other than that, for me to go out of my way and do research, I, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. So that's why I'm like a little confused as to why she's here. Him, obviously. And him, obviously. You know what I'm saying? It's like crazy, bro. In 2024, influencers are the ones building our culture and leading the next generation. They are reshaping not only the landscape of entertainment, but also the psychological and social fabric of their audiences. But what happens when these influencers become more and more desperate for views, more and more desensitized and craving more dopamine? And what are the results when people try to be those they watch every day? Well, it leads to what you'll see in this video, where we will go over the worst influencers that are rotting our culture, starting with Adam22. You know, Adam 22 made a name for himself as a podcast host and Fuck internet it, personality, known primarily for his YouTube channel No Jumper. He had gained recognition for his interviews with up and coming hip hop artists and yep. figures from the urban culture scene, having one of the biggest podcasts in the niche, going viral on all of social media for years. But in March of 2018, Fuck. a Twitter user posted a now deleted thread that included screenshots allegedly proving that Adam 22 had a relationship with a girl when she was just and he was in his 20s at the time. The thread also suggested but that he no. might have seen her. Now, of course, this was controversial and couldn't really be proven, but later on, he would actually openly acknowledge the relationship in a blog post and also shared explicit images of Desiree, the young female he supposedly However, Adam completely denied the accusations of but for years, this sordid story disappeared from the public spotlight. However, in March of this year, while filming a podcast episode, oh, yeah, I remember this. I remember watching this clip right here, bro. The predator catching platform official Busters confronted Adam regarding his allegations. I'll be a hypocrite if I don't address the situation that happened with you. There is no situation with me. The one where you was messed with this girl? It never happened. What do you think happened? And so Adam would respond by booting them off of his show, reigniting public interest in this entire controversy. Wait, right? We can't take that jacket off of nobody. Fair, right? You gotta go. Hey, man. You know. <laughs> But it would only get worse from there. You see, as things started stagnating, his life started to get more boring. After the honeymoon period of his marriage, Adam22 wanted to change things. He wanted to make more money, more influence, more fame. And why not spice up his relationship at the same time? So how would he go about doing this? Well, by seeing his partner getting frisky with other people for money. Now, most men are very uncomfortable with the thought of their partner sleeping with other men. But Adam22 isn't most men. He will do anything for views. He will do anything for money. You see, Adam22 is also an adult oh. star with his other podcast show being widely regarded in the content world and in these podcasts he would often end up having with the girl he'd be podcasting along with his wife but this would begin to change as soon as he married lena the plug and in june of 2023 lena the plug and bro the shouldn't have happened i ain't gonna lie bro because it just looks way more crazier bro yeah they've been together for a while but like solidifying a marriage bro and just still doing shit like this it just looks so crazy bro announced her first ever video with another man aptly named jason love previously lena had solely collaborated on videos with other females and adam himself but in this case adam 22 would hype up the video between lena and another man they were building up the suspense on twitter and their only fan subscriptions went through the roof the marketing was genius bro. but also completely debauched and morally bankrupt ever interested in doing your first ever scene that me and Lena, I, I mean, I, I don't want to speak for you, but I feel like, yo, dude, would he be a suitable candidate? Would you, can I tap him I in? I don't know. There's absolutely 0% chance of that happening. <laughs> and it's not because. My bro, this man ain't no simp. Adam, you talking to the wrong, <laughs> the wrong person, bro. This man ain't no simp for that shit. That one up there, though? Yeah, he probably, yeah, he probably tagged to him. You feel me? Not this one. <laughs> <laughs> Lena is particularly unattractive is because she's married to Adam and I have no interest in degenerate pointless I have no interest in making a spectacle of myself or even just in Hey and listen We know he can Imagine he said yes 
it was going to happen. Most likely, it probably would have happened. He said, no, she's married. I'm not doing that. I'm not stooping down to that type of level. He's keeping it real, bro. That is insane. Boy, <laughs> you asked that question to the wrong one. Involving myself in anything which I deem to be overall haram and pointless especially considering that lena and adam have a child and yeah. soon after all the hype after all the build-up and adam marketing this as much as possible he would unveil to the world a video of his wife getting penetrated by another man and in the process losing all of his dignity and self-respect because soon after the video went viral adam 22 encountered a whole host of online criticism as individuals began labeling him as a for permitting his wife to engage in with another man. Adam even discussed this matter with Sneeko, but he yep. would express his acceptance of Jason Love, stating that allowing Lena to partake in the scene was a beneficial career move for her, but a death sentence for his. Even though the would make millions from this, was it really worth sacrificing their entire family? The backlash on Twitter against this continued to gain traction in early July, Fuckin and that's when Adam a. began addressing it through his tweets, defending both his and his wife's decision. In one of his tweets, he expresses his indifference towards being called a stating that he found the video to be utterly arousing. In another tweet, however, his true- This man's a different type of breed, bro. I, I say that for real. I should have said that from the jump. Once he said we don't talk about Adam-22, I should be like, bro, this man is a different type of breed. Can never be me, boy. Your feelings became more apparent, nah, nah, with the 40-year-old nah. content creator acknowledging that he felt a slight sense of jealousy initially regarding their decision. And since then, the No Jumper host has shown no self-respect, embracing the backlash. And then you got this man, who did his shit, and he's chilling, bro. This shit, nobody talk about him. It's all talk about Adam, bro. Yo, I just... Uh, that's insane, bro. Like, really think about that. The man went crazy with your woman, and he's still living carefree for real. He don't got to worry about nobody calling him shit. You know? And dismissing any criticisms that have come his way. Yo, Adam, you let it... Yo, isn't it crazy that you guessed it on here? Like, before I had even really hinted at Yo, you it, really you did guessed that? it. You watched it? I didn't watch it. I'll probably see some chunks of it. So you just, like, was in another room listening to her... No, she was at a hotel being filmed by a professional and down by a professional, to be totally honest. Right. So when you say there was an underlying value, what is the underlying value of your wife getting railed by a big black guy? Probably just money primarily. But then also... Instead of being honest and admitting that the idea of his wife sleeping with another man was a terrible idea, even... I ain't gonna lie, bro. At this point, I want to know how much he made off that shit. I really just want to see the figures on that shit. How much money... Was, was put in your bank after that shit, bro. Even if it made him loads of money and fame, Adam instead doubled down on it, appearing on podcasts like Bradley Martin's and insisting that it was an excellent idea. You know, because he and his wife made loads of money from the sordid affair. I mean, bro, the first question I have is like, why? 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 Yeah. Um, I guess like number one on the list would probably just be like money. Rather absurdly, but not really surprisingly, Adam and Lena yeah. would then double down on this, releasing their yep. own show titled For the Love of Lena. I reacted to this shit. This boy. It was, I ain't gonna lie, it was entertaining. Shout out to Crip Mac. He made that shit so entertaining, bro. But she's 10 men compete for the chance to partake in a th the duo. And although the show was free to watch, the th was only accessible on OnlyFans, of course, making them even more money by his wife. But what Adam and Lena fail to realize is that all the views and money in the world cannot buy you dignity, and they can definitely not buy you respect. Now his entire family has been ruined, his credibility destroyed, but at least he's gained millions and millions of dollars. This is the source of his credibility destroyed, but at least couple earns 3.6 mil annually through their videos on OF. In the past one month, their network has almost doubled. Damn. So what, they made three, four mil off that shit, right? He's gained millions and millions of dollars. This is the source of content that's developing our culture today. Instead of Shakespeare's, we're starting to have Adam 22's raised teenagers. This is where our society is headed. But individuals desperate for money and validation will go to the bottom of the barrel to outshock each other, completely whoring out their bodies and family just for more attention. But of course, Adam 22 isn't the only talentless and tasteless influencer. Ah, uh, here we go. This fucking guy. Bro. I was just saying this the other day, bro. This man is at the point where it's like, you don't need to be doing no dumb shit anymore, bruh. 
I ain't gonna lie, like the shit he's been doing lately, that shit can just completely stop. And actually do good content, be genuine, be real, you know what I'm saying? Like just do more positive shit, I should say. Just do more positive shit, bro. His content is so corny, but I don't know why people watch this kid. Bring our culture today. Tweets they own. Neon. Real name Rangesh Mutama, an American YouTuber turned streamer who first gained recognition as a prominent NBA 2K content creator. But in recent times, however, he was inspired by the culture of streamers like Aiden Ross. And this is when Neon's content became scandalous and considerably more clickbaity. In short, he has morphed into a full blown liar who even faked his own death on a YouTube video. Someone else, okay? I don't want to. I don't, don't want to make y'all stop losing my content. And lastly, bro, I'm going to be recording a few videos with other YouTubers so you guys can still see me for a little bit until, like, like you know, if the surgery doesn't go well. Because if the surgery does not go well, I'll bleed out to death. And if that happens, you know, that's what's going to happen. And is almost universally hated by everyone online for his stupidity. Nevertheless, after faking his death, the 19-year-old continued on as if nothing had ever happened. In May of this year, <laughs> Neon then appeared on a live stream with Aiden Ross and Sneeko. And what initially began as an open discussion with morbidly obese Ali C. Lopez, a blogger turned TikTok personality, quickly turned into a vicious attack. I genuinely hope someone comes to your house and shoot the fucking head, you fucking hit. Oh, no. How the fuck you wake up like that? How do you? Please tell me. Bro, corny, bro. This man, this kid right here is corny, bro. Cornball. It's like for what, dog? You're fat, obese. You're fucking. You're Listen, even if she came at him sideways for him to act like this, does not defend or should be a reason for him to do this, say this type of shit, bro. Corny. Now, I'm not really a fan of Lopez, but it's safe to say that Neon probably crossed the line here. The explicit tirade got so intense that even Sneeko, a content creator who often lacks a filter, decided to actually leave in the middle of the discussion. Now, of course, this was done for attention and clicks. The more you insult someone- He didn't leave. He, 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 he closed the fucking camera. He was probably laughing or something, but he didn't leave. He was still there, bro. Yo, what the fuck? This is some cornballs people are making famous, bro. You leave in the middle of the discussion. Now, of course, this was done for attention and clicks. The more you insult someone, the more controversial you can be, the more yeah. people respond, the more yeah. reactions you get, yeah. and the more polarizing you are. And when you're polarizing, you always gain yeah. more fans and more notoriety. During this period, Neon would insult everyone, even Adam22. No matter what, he would take down anyone. And whilst it might have been entertaining, it was just also bottom of the barrel entertainment. What's the point in this stuff? Who wants to waste their time watching this garbage? It's just mindless and toxic. This is the stuff iPad kids are growing up with. But as he continued to grow in popularity, Neon would eventually receive some karma. In a video that caused quite a stir, Neon could be seen trembling in fear as alleged thief stole his phone and shoes. However, almost everyone was skeptical if this was even authentic. At first, people thought this was karma, but then it just seemed completely fake. Another lie for clicks, deceiving his fanbase once again, but it did go viral, helping Neon even further catapult his fame. Neon would even call himself a bitch, and in a somber tone, he seemed to lament, wanting Andrew Tate to be his new daddy. I'm not gonna lie, bro, I just wanna say this, um, Andrew Tate, if you're watching this video, bro, I really appreciate you, bro. I really, really do. You are a fucking great human being, bro. You're an amazing human, because I'm gonna be honest, I don't think anyone else is doing that. After someone literally sat there on the internet for 10 to 15 minutes and tried shitting on you, and you come back, and you want to help me, and I'm gonna be honest, I need help. I do, I do. But of course, this was just to go viral. None of this was authentic, real, but it was entertaining for most. But more and more, Neon would just hang out with these in LA and Miami, getting a new OnlyFans girlfriend simply for clout, and doing anything he could to get into influencer parties. Eventually, this sort of degenerate behavior got him criticized by Andrew Tate. But Neon, Neon or whatever his name is, he's a clown and Zerk's a clown. I don't want to insult them too much, but they're, they're just children being, stu being stupid. Why? Well, for using OnlyFans models in their video. Tate, a man who once ran a CD webcam business himself that exploited lonely men for cash, accused Neon of lacking any creativity and of seeking cheap clicks by associating himself with questionable models, calling Neon a moron and accusing him of degrading himself. And to be fair, it's completely true. And then more recently, just before the latest UFC event, UFC 296. Clown. What this man? Y'all gonna see. Cause I already seen what, what he's trying to talk about. Clown, bro. Six, Neon told his fans that he would confront Donald Trump at the event. 
However, after UFC officials were informed about his intentions, they denied the streamer any entry to the event. When you start saying stupid shit like that, yeah, you're probably gonna get busted up and thrown out of here, you know, making threats and talking dumb shit. One doesn't really need to be a genius to think that Neon will continue doing what he does best, talking stupid shit. But why is this stuff popular in the first place? Do you really have to be at the bottom of the barrel? Do you have to go so low to get views? And is this who's going to be raising Generation Alpha? And as the worst, most stupid behavior gets rewarded with more and more money and attention, this stuff's only going to continue more and more. There's going to be an infinite amount of Neons, and to accompany them, they're only fans' girlfriends. But speaking of spreading manure with one's mouth, it's time we discuss Ruby Rose. Talk to me, because I literally don't know what the fuck going on here last thing i heard was somebody paid a hundred bands for her of bro some bullshit a controversial influencer with more than 5 million Instagram followers. Rose is known for many things, few of them any good. Ostensibly, she's a singer and songwriter. In reality, however, she's just an OnlyFans model. And after all, genuinely talented singers and songwriters sing and write songs that didn't really expose themselves as OnlyFans unless they were a stripper to begin with. Although Rose appears to have quite a following, it's important to remember that appearances can be incredibly deceptive. Here's the hunted that wow guy, bro. But in late 2023, she would become famous, going viral across the internet, as the OnlyFans star revealed a string of messages from a supposedly desperate fan of hers. Everyone everywhere, Penguin Zero, all of Twitter, Reddit, every corner of the internet was speaking about it. This man, a top spender on OnlyFans, expressed his love for her. In the initial messages, the man questioned why Rose hadn't been responding to his messages, emphasizing the significant amount of money he had invested in their relationship. He always wondered why Rose didn't love him as much as he loved her. You're absolutely perfect. There was no one else like you in the world, the man wrote. You could be my queen and I would be your king. I would give you anything you desire. We could even have an unconventional relationship where you have the freedom to do as you please as long as I know that you come back to me at the end of the day. I promise to treat you better than anyone else, Ruby. I love you with all my heart, he wrote. Obviously smitten, he continued, I have never felt this way with anyone before. I want to marry you, start a family. Apparently this was fake though. So I saw some shit where apparently this shit was fake. I don't know, bro. With you and be exclusively yours. I would give up everything and sacrifice anything just for you. I'm willing to do anything for you to love me, and I will give you everything I have for the chance that you will never leave me. I want you to be with me forever. In my eyes, I had never seen or known anything that I am so certain will be perfect, which almost sounded too good to be true. So infatuated with Rose, the guy known as Brandon even got a tattoo of her face on his leg. Soon after, however, the truth emerged, and it wasn't really pretty. Not for Rose, anyway. This was just one giant advert, as Rose's alleged number one subscriber came forward to address the $60,000 controversy surrounding the rapper, asserting that it was all a ploy to promote her account. What a shock. Damn. So it was fake. All of that to promote her shit. Yo, that's actually absurd, bro. <laughs> And it was genius because everyone on the internet was talking about it. In an interview with the aforementioned cuck of the year, Adam22, the man who was portrayed as an excessively obsessed fan spilled the beans, insisting that he never actually purchased any of Ruby's content on OnlyFans and that the $60,000 actually belonged to someone else entirely, not him, probably the marketing team. He also claimed that Ruby's team had contacted him and paid him to stage the hoax. I, I Damn. didn't purchase none of her OnlyFans content. I just went and took a picture with Ruby Rose, right? Like, okay. I got paid for it. I didn't know exactly what it was for. And uh, I met up with her to take this picture. Next day, I'm the top, I'm like the fucking OnlyFans top spender. And they kind of let me know that I was going to be like this, like one of her like subscribers, I guess, on OnlyFans or something like that. Bro. <sighs> yeah, he got paid to help her promote this shit, but it's like, how, how, how do you look, bro? To millions, you look like the biggest simp in the world. And you probably still do just for going through all of this, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, bro. I don't know. Yeah, right? I was like, oh, okay, that sounds cool. You know, I didn't know it was going to blow up to this big, huge story. At the same time, I'm like getting all this like hate and shit. And although he did agree to have Rose's name tattooed on the back of his leg, which is really creepy, he was paid approximately fifteen to $20,000 to ink his body. A move he will- I hope he covers that shit up, bro. <laughs> How much was that tat? And they paid him 15, 20 K. Well, I'm covering that bitch up with something, boy. You know what I'm saying? If even possible. Probably regret for many, many years to come, but it shows how easy it is for these stars to manipulate Twitter's algorithm and thus the entirety of YouTube to promote OnlyFans garbage. This is the ultimate advertisement. It's all fake. Anytime you see a controversy surrounding 
the star, always look behind the motive. Degenerates like Ruby Rose will continue to plague the internet and our culture and society with these subconscious and yet genius marketing tactics. But no one is more degenerate and sneaky than the Pool Brothers. Oh man. Now today we see them in the WWE in the boxing ring. Both of them seem to be doing remarkably well, accelerating their careers hugely from YouTube. But on closer inspection, these people have gotten away with everything, showing Max. that if you have enough clout following and money, you can do pretty much anything you want, with both men having been accused of a whole array of scandals. But one of the worst they've ever done is their crypto related scams and stealing money from their fans. There's a reason why the search for Pool Brothers scam brings up so many videos on TikTok. It's because the brothers have used this platform and other popular social media platforms to sell thousands of fans around the world very expensive lies. And of the two, however, Logan is by far the biggest sinner. He's not only thrown his friends and colleagues under- Yeah, I was gonna say, this is all Logan though the bus and gained a reputation as being as fake as you can be, he's also been involved in one of the worst crypto scams on YouTube. Two years ago, Logan Paul unveiled CryptoZoo, an animated NFT venture heavily influenced by Pokemon. We have a massive team behind it and are probably out of pocket like a million just because we believe it's going to work. On development. Yeah. For a little over $1,100, individuals would have the chance to hatch and raise animal hybrids on the blockchain. The first 10,000 NFTs sold out. Everybody bought into this. This was during the crypto market boom. However, the game never materialized. Even now, as you watch this video, no game actually exists to this day. Investors were sold a well thought out lie. So what happened here? Well, in January of this year, Logan Paul, worth somewhere in the region of $245 million, unveiled a $1.5 million compensation plan for disgruntled investors who didn't get the game that they were promised saying he wanted to offer a rewards program for players who are disappointed in the status of the game. A solemn looking pool also promised to finish the game. That promise was never fulfilled. But soon after Paul's pledge, a number of investors filed a class action lawsuit against both CryptoZoo and Paul, alleging that the influencer and members of his team stole millions of dollars from them via a fraudulent venture. Now the people in the lawsuit declined to speak, citing fear of retaliation for- Bro, I always question this shit. How do you have millions to your name? But you still out here wanting to make more millions, but not in the right way. You're doing shit like this to scam people for bread. When you know damn well, you don't really fucking need it. You know what I'm saying? I'll never understand that, bro. Like, if you want more bread, do it the right fucking way from the Paul brothers. But then it got even worse, as in September of this year, Paul claimed he never made a single token, never sold any tokens, and never profited from the project. He also insisted that justice will ultimately prevail and that he is working tirelessly to rectify the situation. I never made any money, never sold any tokens, and I only had the best intentions going in. But if you find yourself rolling your eyes in disbelief, you're not alone. As in July, Paul proposed to his fiance, Nina Agro, which is a whole other controversy, with the whole body count issue between her and Dylan Dennis. But when Paul proposed to her, he would give to a ring worth almost two million dollars you see instead of using some of this money to compensate his victims he instead chose to spend and what he only needed to compensate 1.3 he spent an extra 700 bro getting this fucking ring yo i can't man on a ridiculously expensive ring, rather than paying back the fans he scammed. <laughs> and as CryptoZoo victims patiently waited for compensation, it seems like this day will never come and Paul will continue to profit as a fully fledged WWE star in the hellhole that is Saudi Arabia, making millions if not billions with his new prime energy drink. An overpriced, disgusting, caffeine-laden monstrosity <laughs> that is banned from- Bro, this man went crazy, bro. He talking that talk. I actually did a taste test on all this shit, bro. The energy and the hydration. They're not the worst, but I, I'd rather, you know what I'm saying? I'd rather other companies than Prime, for sure. School is in Australia. Like Prime, a drink that leaves a bad taste in your mouth, Logan Paul is one of those influences that's rotting your brain. Now discussed individually, it might seem like these influences have very little in common, but they have. You see, they are in many ways a direct representation of everything wrong with today's soporalistic, self-obsessed society, where people aren't rewarded for being respectable and decent, but for being dishonorable and indecent. Influencer culture. People are not rewarded for being respectable and decent, but they're getting rewarded for being disrespectful and what he just said, bro. The internet makes the corniest, weirdest fucking people famous, bro. I'm talking, I'm really talking about more so the, the first two, Adam and fucking Neon, bro. 
culture driven by the likes of Gordon Adam 22 is fueled by and incentivizes self-absorption, shallowness, conceit, and more often than not, deceit. It glorifies materialism, predatory behavior and ignorance, vanity and arrogance, all of which are detrimental to the development of a healthy, cohesive society. Before the dawn of social media, people like Adam 22 or Logan Paul would have been laughed at, being called a narcissist, even a fraud, in possession of a bottomless and satiable ego. However, in this age of social media, this is the people raising our current culture. When their behavior isn't punished, it's reinforced. These guys getting paid untold millions of dollars. And that's why today we're seeing more and more aspiring influencers attempting to imitate this behavior. And if we are what we eat, we've got to ask ourselves, what is mass consumption of- Listen, bro, and we can also say, right? We can talk all this shit about these people, whatever. That's easy. Why not start pointing fingers at people who watch them, spend their money on them and their products, this, this, and the third? You know what I'm saying? Like, like I said, the internet makes the corniest people famous. We should start blaming people. For real, bro. Y'all want to blame, blame me because I bought his, uh, his, his Prime Energy drinks and shit? Go ahead. I'll take the blame. I've watched a few of his videos. I reacted to a few of his videos. You know what I'm saying? But this is just... The people is really to blame as well. ...of influencer-driven material doing to our minds and souls. While studies clearly show that influencers are degenerating team behavior. These are the leaders of our new generation. And what does that say about where we're headed? In many ways, these modern day influencers are the antithesis of what the great philosopher Peter Berger meant by the sacred canopy. The idea that all healthy societies build a figurative shield that protects them from the difficulties of life. This canopy offers a sort of shelter for members of broader society. It acts as a glue that holds people together. Sacred in this context doesn't necessarily mean religious, it simply means something we as a broader collective consider truly important, dare I say vital. It puts the we above me. An influencer culture does the very opposite of this. It places the influencer at the top of the pyramid, and their behavior, attitude, and culture trickles down onto everyone who views it. And sadly, as recent surveys show, when children are asked what they want to be when they grow up, more and more people are saying social media influencer, and probably only fan star in the years to come. Just imagine millions of children. Boy, imagine hearing your kid say, I want to be an OF model, OF influencer. growing up on iPads, being raised by Adam22, Neon, Ruby Rose, or Logan Paul. This is the world that awaits us, but maybe it's already here. But who will pull the strings tomorrow? Welcome to the world of AI influencers. And if you think things are bad now, 2024 could be a completely different picture. You see, not only will we deal with a huge increase of these degenerate influencers, but we're also going to have trained AI-generated ones. Meta, the company responsible for Instagram, recently unveiled dozens of new AI influencers. And if there's one word that describes Meta's creation, it's it's just truly creepy. One of the influencers is called Billy, an AI-generated creation that bears a striking resemblance to model and socialite Kendall Jenner. Like Billy, all Meta's AI influencers possess distinct personalities and resemble well-known celebrities or public figures. The AI influencers even- Fucking scary, bro. This is scary as fuck, bro. Share posts, allowing users to engage in direct conversations with chatbots or explore their feeds for AI generated content. And not surprisingly, many of these AI models are designed to titillate and excite specifically lonely young men. Already, the online world is flooded with hyper sexualized, hyper pixelated female figures, many of whom seem like the ideal woman. But these computer generated monstrosities don't just surpass conventional beauty standards, they obliterate them. We're genuinely approaching a time when men will actually give up pursuing real women as men become more and more sexless and instead settle for artificially generated alternatives and corny you rather chat to a fucking bot than to an actual human that is fucking corny bro bro i actually saw a video um it was a playback video shout out to playback and it was talking about um this company who create created something like this on the screen right now just an ai chat of you know a man Speaking to an AI bot, a woman, bro, an AI woman. And it's like, they, they were trying to sell it as a service or whatever the fuck. It, bro, corny, bro. If you out here rather do this than talk to somebody human. There's literally, sorry, not sorry, there's no hope for you, gang. There's literally no hope for you, bro. You think you don't have a chance with women now? You get into this? Never. Never.
having a chance with a woman, bro. 2024 may be the year that we cross the Rubicon, but these AI generated models are nothing more than sedatives, designed to keep you situated in virtual worlds, addicted to the pixels, consuming more, and giving away all of your privacy. And now even OnlyFans, addicted to the pixels, consuming more. Th this? That, why? Man, talk, yo, they talking to a bot. Can I meet them? Can I meet your family? Y'all are fucking weird, bro. And giving away all of your privacy. And now even OnlyFans has a huge surge of AI models. And now there's even FanView, a subscription platform specializing in content featuring nothing but AI personalities, where the platform hosts fake females like Emily Pellegrini, a 21-year-old AI model from Italy, and Seeker Moon, another AI model that supposedly earns $20,000 per month for her flesh and blood creator. If all of this isn't creepy How is a robot making better than a human? Obviously, there's somebody behind all of this making the bread. But just based off plain sight, an AI is making more money than more money than you and I, bro, a month. This is so sad, bro. This is so sad. Keep me away from all this fucking AI bullshit. When it comes to women and interactions with people and get this shit out of my face, bro. Keep me far away from this corny ass shit. Yeah, now, FanView is also developing a message generator and audio tool that can mimic the AI models in real time, providing a more immersive experience for subscribers. And the proliferation of these plastic, hollow, empty AI influencers is such a hideous path that we're going towards, and it honestly makes you wonder who's paying for this stuff. I mean, the impact of influencers is already troublesome, but in 2024, their impact, driven by the rapid rise of AI technology, could prove to be absolutely devastating to our culture and society. But only time will tell if these AI influencers can actually replace real human influence. This is so absurd, bro. People would rather settle for this shit than to go out and conversate human to human, bro. Like, times have really fucking changed, bro. Keep all that shit away from me, bro. I like human to human face to face interaction. I don't want to be out here wasting my time and money on a fucking robot. Calling them influencers is part of the problem that us. Literally. Those who expose their audience to degenerate behavior include large children channels that present children with violent content, most dangerous influencers. I feel very sorry for Gen Alpha. What horrible role models and influencers they will look up to. I like, please, bro. Please keep me away from this bullshit, bro. Hearing your kids say, I want to be an OF influencer or whatever, OF something. Boy, I. Me personally, I feel like I failed as a parent if I hear that shit. Simple. That's just me, though. Y'all feel how you feel? It is what it is. That's just me. If I hear that shit and it's my own kid, my own blood, I failed. I failed. Let me know what you guys thought about all of this, okay? That's my reaction from the drug of the video. Like, subscribe if you haven't. I'm out.